been some top level racing this week on three continents and we have full reaction to a hectic week at the Giro d'Italia. It's been an incredible first week of racing at the Giro d'Italia. We've had two sprint stage wins from Mark Cavendish. We've had last year's winner Ryder Hesjedel on the attack and off the back. We've had Bradley Wiggins on the podium with his Sky teammates and on the floor. And two great stage wins from two hardworking team riders. Adam Hansen from Lotto Bellasol on stage seven and Alex Dowsett from Movistar on stage eight. Alex is one of the riders that GCN has chosen to follow for our Rider Diaries series this year's Giro d'Italia and so we were privileged to take a front row seat as Alex waited nervously to find out whether he had indeed won Stage 8's time trial. It's a massive ask to sort of turn over the Olympic time trial champion, um, but we'll have to wait and see. I've done everything I can. If it's, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. It hasn't anywhere near sunk in yet. It's, um, it's just the most unexpected and un crazy thing here, a first Grand Tour and a stage win. Um, and spending a day in the white jersey, are just, it's the stuff dreams are made of. And as for Mark Cavendish, there's been a lot of talk about his lead out, or lack of it, this season. And we caught up with Brian Holm, his director sportif at Omega Pharma Quickstep, to find out just exactly what changes they'd put into place for their team for this year's Giro d'Italia. We try to change it all the time until it's working, but actually we know from the time of HTC, it doesn't happen overnight. It's probably going to like take six, seven, eight months, so hopefully it's perfect for, for the tour, but uh, we're changing on and off. It's not just the pros who are tackling Grand Tours these days. We met Keith Tuffley, a man who's completed the routes of the Tour de France and the Giro in previous years, but is tackling not just one, but all three Grand Tours this year. We met the former managing director of Goldman Sachs after stage eight. A few years ago, the Tour de France came through our home village in Switzerland, where I live. I'm obviously Australian, but live in Switzerland. And I thought on that day that it'd be a great challenge to cycle just one stage to see if I could do it. It was a long stage over into Italy and back into France, but I was able to do it. I thought, if I can do one stage, then maybe I could do two or three. So the next year I did three stages, and the year after that I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna try and do the whole lot. So yeah, two years ago, I did the entire Tour de France and then last year I did the Giro, uh, and this year I thought the next the obvious challenge was to try and do all three in the, in the same season. And if it, only 23 pro cyclists have actually done that, you know, now they're obviously racing. I'm just uh, I'm just cycling, but uh, it does highlight how physically challenging it is. Another very prestigious race started on Sunday, featuring some big name riders. And the Tour of California peloton was greeted with scorching temperatures of over 40 degrees in stages one and two. On stage one, the 10 km climb of Paloma whittled the bunch down, although Peter Sagan and a number of other riders were able to rejoin over the top. However, the stage ultimately went to a last minute breakaway of two men. Francisco Mancebo of 5 Hour Energy was outsmarted and outsprinted by Louis Westra of Vacan Soleil DCM, who took the win and the first leader's jersey. Stage two saw the first summit finish of the race, and Hanier Azevedo of the US domestic outfit Jameis Hagen's Berman dispatching the Pro Tour opposition to take a great win and the leader's jersey from BMC's TJ Van Garderen. The European-based riders have been contending with such terrible conditions this spring that the Tour of California weather may come as something of a shock to the system. And it'll be interesting to see how the race develops as to whether this tips the balance in favour of the US domestic pros. What do you think? Who do you think is going to win this year's Tour of California? Let us know in the comments section. The women's pro peloton made the long trip east to Chongming Island in China, first for a three-day stage race, and then a couple of days later for a World Cup. In the three-day, Annette Edmondson of Orica Green Edge took the final stage, and in doing so, clinched the overall win. The race also confirmed the talent of Lucy Garner of Argos Shimano, as she too took a stage win. In the following World Cup, it was a relative unknown, Tatiana Ryachenko of the Kyria Forno da Solo team, who made an audacious move with 15 kilometers of the race remaining. She successfully held off a furious chase from the sprinter teams who were eventually led across the line by Georgia Bronzini of Wiggle Honda. Back to the Giro d'Italia now, and we got our own Dan Lloyd's impressions from the commentary box. Dan, we said last week that the Giro d'Italia is just fantastic to watch from the very first stage, and the last week has indeed proved that, hasn't it? Yeah, it did. It was, uh, like the first nine stages, there was one day where you can sit back and relax and think, well, I'll just come in for the last five Ks, but it gets interesting. There was always something over the sprinters or for the GC riders, and it was very, very interesting indeed, especially with the wet weather, which really hampered the uh, chance of some riders. Yeah, 
let's talk about this because obviously Bradley Wiggins has been talked about an awful lot now, hasn't he, uh, for his inability to descend. I mean, do you, can you pinpoint what it what it's been down to? Do you think? No, I mean everybody's speculating, and I'm sure even Brad himself is starting to wonder why he suddenly he seems to be so scared on the downhills in the wet over here. I mean, in the past, just a couple of years ago, when I was racing with him at Paris Nice. He actually tweeted after one of the wet stages in the mountains saying how good the Veloflex tyres and Team Sky were in the wet on the downhills and that was the reason why he was doing so well. Just a couple of months ago in Catalonia, he actually split the peloton on the first stage, drawing a group of about 15 and fought it out in stage victory. So he can descend, he just seems to have completely lost his confidence so far in the Giro and he'll be hoping that the rest of it is dry. Let's talk about another of the uh, of the recent uh, losers from the GC contenders, if I may. We saw Ryder Hesedale, you know, flying at the beginning of the week, and then he obviously lost quite a bit of time just the day after a time trial where he really did quite well for him. Yeah, he uh, said that he had bad legs after that time trial. Of course, it's a much different position when you get onto the time trial bike in such a long period of time as well, an hour and a quarter at least for the riders on that bike. And I think he was just suffering in his glutes the next day and especially with the cold and wet as well coming into Florence you see he was all right on the longer climbs but when it came to the shorter climbs at the finish and they were going that bit harder he just didn't have the power to keep up they did quite a good limit of losses as it were with that Tom Danielson it could have been a lot worse for the whole team really on that day but uh, he'll be looking to the high mountains now to decide whether or not he's still got a chance of going to the podium Dan has a better idea of what's in store this week for the riders than most, having been out to Italy to recce some of the stages. Well, it's the final 10Ks, average 8%. I'm on the steepest section now, which in the profile is 20%, but according to me, it's a bit more than that. Anyway, it's hard, and I'm struggling to talk, so I'll catch up with you later. Finally, we'll leave you with our Tweet of the Week from journalist Daniel Freib. A rider whose identity I won't reveal to me recently said, Nibali's meant to be the best descender in the world. He's rubbish. Rubbish. Food for thought. What do you think? Let us know. See you next time. Today marks the start of the high mountains at this year's race. 167 kilometres from Cordonon to Alto Piano del Montasio. Along that route, the rise will twice hit an altitude of over 1,500 metres. <laughs>